the deal that's being offered, you know, back in the 90s, early 2000s, for most of the 20th century by the New Yorker, by the New York Times, is basically like we are, we're the Delta Force, we're the best you can do. And and nobody would think of leaving. And that deal is broken for a lot of people, not for everybody. There's lots of people who would kill to work at those places and will never leave those places. But there's far more than there ever was. It was very unusual for decades to hear of someone getting to the New York Times, getting to the New Yorker, and then quitting while they had many years of of writing left in their career. So I think that's a pressure. Like I, I know that's something that the senior leadership is really worried about and thinking about. How do we retain people? Mm-hmm. At the same time, um, though, we don't yet have the full replacement. Everything, you know, getting a Substack, doing a podcast, they don't have. Mm-hmm. You know, the people who seem to really thrive in that market are people like Joe Rogan or. Um you know, kind of fringe figures who get these subs, kind of angry anti-vax sub stacks or whatever. But this is a standard part of the disintermediation um, model that that so many economists and business school professors think about. It's Clayton Christensen disruption, that the new thing is seen as low status, you know, the new way of doing <clears throat> things right. that's cheaper more effective, better meets the needs of, of an audience. It, it's, you know, and, and, and so I, I think we're in, I think that status thing is a big, big thing for journalists in a way, maybe it is less so in other industries. I'm not sure. And so that would be the thing that I would keep my eye on. 